20 plus things you didn't know about your body. Have you ever felt lost watching a workout video full of unfamiliar terms, not knowing what they mean? Flexion, protraction, depression. Is that a workout video or a Latin class? In this video, I will explain the basics of how your body works in a simple and understandable way so you never feel lost again and can start training effectively. Imagine your body divided by three invisible planes that help us understand movement. The frontal plane divides your body into front and back parts. For example, when you lift your arms to the side, the movement happens in this plane. The sagittal plane also runs vertically, but divides your body into left and right sides. Movements like squats or push-ups happen in this plane. The transverse plane runs horizontally, dividing your body into upper and lower parts. Rotational movements, such as twisting your torso, occur in this plane. To understand different movements, you need to know a few fundamental concepts. Flexion occurs when the angle of a joint decrease, like bending your elbow, knee or hip, essentially any movement that brings you closer to a fetal position. Extension is when the angle of a joint increases, like straightening your elbow, knee or hip, moving away from the fetal position. An exception is the ankle, where we talk about dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Pelvic movements are also important, especially when we talk about activating the core through pelvic tilts. Anterior pelvic tilt happens when the pelvis tilts forward as you are pouring water out of it to the front. Posterior pelvic tilt happens when the pelvis tilts backward, like pouring water out behind you. Limb movements can also be classified differently. Abduction occurs when a limb moves away from the midline of the body, such as lifting your arm to the side. Adduction is when the limb moves back toward the midline of the body. Pronation is when the palm faces downward and supination is when it faces upward. It's easy to remember if you think of supination as holding a bowl of soup in your hand. At the shoulder and hip joints, we also talk about medial rotation and lateral rotation, where the limb rotates around its axis. Let's look at the commonly used scapula positions. The basic movements of the scapula is elevation, depression, adduction, abduction, and medial and lateral rotation. We commonly use protraction, which basically means abduction, so the scapulas get far from each other. In gymnastics training, we usually do this with depressed scapulas. The opposite of that is retraction, when you pull back your shoulders and your scapulas get closer to each other. We also do this with depressed shoulders. The types of muscle contractions are easy to understand through the example of the biceps. Isometric contraction happens when the muscle tenses without changing its length, like holding a weight in a fixed position with your arm bent or straight. Concentric contraction occurs when the muscle tenses and shortens, such as lifting the weight by bending your elbow and bringing it closer to your shoulder. Eccentric contraction happens when the muscle tenses while lengthening, like lowering the weight back to its starting position in a controlled manner. In open kinetic chain movements, one end of the limb is free to move, such as during a biceps curl when your hands move freely. The same applies to gym machines where you sit, stand or lie still while moving your limbs. These movements focus more on isolated muscle groups with less involvement of the core. In closed kinetic chain movements, one end of the limb is fixed while the body moves around it, like in a push-up where your hands are stationary and your body moves. The same applies to inverted rows, pull-ups, dips, handstand push-ups, etc. These are more complex movements that heavily involve core stability. You could say that these are more functional and develop strength across multiple muscle groups. One of the most important rules of balance is maintaining the right relationship between your center of gravity and your base of support. You're only in balance if your center of gravity is above your base of support. For example, in a handstand, if your center of gravity shifts too far forward or backward, you will fall over. This principle is crucial in all balance positions, from support holds to hanging levers. The lower your center of gravity and the wider the base of support, the more stable your balance will be. These are the essential things you should know about movement and how your body works as a beginner. I hope it was easy to follow and not too boring. Now that you understand what's happening and we are speaking the same language, 
jump into my training programs and achieve amazing results like my students. If you want to get the most out of yourself and support your progress with irreplaceable help, personalized guidance, constant feedback and 24-7 accountability from an expert, apply to one-on-one -on -one coaching. Otherwise, if you want to work at your own pace using the same well-structured system, just click the link below, join the Gymnastics Method community with the app and get access to all my programs, tutorials, daily workouts and much more. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more and now check out one of my earlier videos on the end screen.